And uh, our next guest, I'm not going to make a long introduction. He's kind of a shrinking violet. He's kind of quiet and subtle, uh, very conservative. So he goes through the hallways at Taft and is very seldom spotted. He's, he's uh, uh, you know, you don't hear a lot about Barton Howe, but uh, <laughs> we managed to draw him out of the shadows. Come on up here, Barton. Yeah. This is the more professional of my two presentations, so I wanted to wear a coat. <laughs> I don't know whose it is, I found it in the car. <laughs> Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, students, members of the press corps, members of the press gang that I forced to be here if they wanted to pass my class. I would like to present to you the third annual State of the Taft Address. The state of the Taft Address is a long and glorious history that dates back to when this building, the eventuary, opened. Local Last for Taft was the first function ever officially held in here. Our poster is still proudly displayed in the bathroom, where you can see our smiling faces as you evacuate your bowels, <laughs> assuming you're not distracted by a magazine or your Angry Birds app. The event was a tremendous success as hundreds turned out to see a remodeled Lincoln City landmark and verify that the feng shui of a felony-inducing nightmare breeding mortuary would not conflict with people's ability to buy micro brews. It did not, and the address moved forward. The first year, the address was to be delivered by Associate Principal Ryan Hawkins, who did not show up because he got stuck at the airport picking up his wife. And while many people would call this non-address a failure, it would set the tone that was to define all local last for Taft's events for years to come. An event where half the acts would cancel out, forcing everyone else to come up with a lot of crap at the last minute. <laughs> Praying desperately that no one would ask for their money back. The second year, Mr. Hawkins did attend to present the State of the Taft Address, bringing his official statement a style that he called both winging it and sincerely sweaty palms. He presented a speech that many today still regard as Obama-esque and bushy in that no one can remember a single thing he said that was worth quoting, even on a motivational poster alongside a pretty picture. That brings us to this year's State of the Taft Address, where I have now taken over the duties, as Mr. Hawkins is once again unavailable, and why we will miss such sterling observations as, I have no idea what I'm doing here, and did I kill enough time? We thank him for letting us at least know he would be unavailable way back in August. So it falls to me, Barton Howe, teacher and humorist with a following of at least 54 people on Facebook, to present this year's address, an annual look at our school, where it's been, where it is now, and where we'd like to be in the future in the event that a larger than predicted tsunami strikes the city. First, let me discuss the elephant in the room, the plaque controversy. My feeling is simple. Plaque is bad. Every dentist says so. Brush your stupid teeth. Four out of five dentists say you should, and the fifth obviously got their degree from some Caribbean medical school. There, glad we got that out of the way. Many students and community members began the year discussing the large number of staff that left Taft High School over the summer. Many conspiracy theories were investigated as to why this might be. Aliens, Sasquatch, the superintendent shooting blow darts from a grassy knoll, you name it. Finally, one theory was borne out as the truth. They wanted to leave. While this was disturbing to many people, Brian Fresky became a Californian, the unfortunate truth was that life goes on, the world keeps spinning, and occasionally people switch jobs to keep their lives and paychecks interesting. Fortunately, however, just as life's little tragedies take things away, it also brings them anew, which explains why our new math teacher, Mr. Isaac Bass, is in fact a member of the Witness Relocation Program as a former spy for the anti-Walmart Liberation Front. <laughs> Moving along, I would like to now address some community members' concerns about discipline problems in the school. Anecdotal evidence from teachers and students seems to suggest the number of referrals is up. These numbers, like many moving points of data, can be hard to track, but the principal would like to assure everyone that the number is, and I quote, roughly equal to the number of people signed up for Obamacare. That is to say, two. <laughs> Closer to the classroom, this year at Taft High School 712, we have been drilling a lot in preparation for the end of the world. Living where we do, it's only a matter of time until a fire, tsunami, earthquake, or dipstick in an RV wreaks havoc on our way of life. Not surprisingly, many students do not take these drills seriously, figuring that in the event of a real emergency, somebody would put a picture of casualties on Pinterest and give them advice. That, and any time you ask teenagers to huddle together under a desk, their minds seem to go someplace perverted. <laughs> During one of our first fire drills, the students were there for a bunch of nuts. 
talking, texting on their cell phones, Facebooking now that they were outside the school's internet filter. The drill had to be run again. The second time, the drill went much better, with students marching in straight lines, quiet, and largely at attention. Tragically, this was also the day that the exchange students were visiting from North Korea, and 17 8th graders were accidentally conscripted into the Army of the People's Republic. <laughs> Strangely, none of these children had been called in absent by their parents. In later discussions about the inappropriate behavior in the first fire drill, students revealed they had been overly noisy and idiotic on purpose. For one thing, having watched disaster documentaries such as 2012, The Day After Tomorrow, and any recent films starring Nicolas Cage, they thought they were supposed to act like morons in the event of an emergency. Also, as the drill was held during the first sunny day in two weeks, they figured a second run-through might be a good chance to get a tan without having to pay for it. <laughs> Our most recent drill, the shelter-in-place drill, was much more successful the first time through. All students and teachers, having been instructed to seal the room's doors and windows with tape and plastic, each room became an airtight shelter against toxic gases and airborne pollutants. Some problems were reported, however. In Ms. Westbrook's culinary class, it was clearly a bad idea to feed the kids bean burritos prior to sealing the room. <laughs> <laughs> Although no fatalities were reported, at least three students have asked to be transferred to a North Korean high school. <laughs> also, throughout the school, there seemed to be a correlation between seventh grade teachers and those asking for antiperspirant and roll-on to be included in emergency supply kits. <laughs> for now, THS administration say the drills are over and they'll be looking at what the results mean beyond not having to create actual lesson plans for tiger time. Two concerns, however, are immediate. One, while many students may know how to joke about being sealed inside a clear plastic object, only about 5% are actually proficient enough in vocabulary to correctly use the word prophylactic. Two, many teachers given a choice between spending hours sealed inside with their students or perishing via some type of gaseous born death, would rather just go outside and die pushing on the lawn. Though not confirmed, sources close to the administration report almost all of them are middle school teachers. And Miss Westbrook, who still has a lot of burrito ingredients. <laughs> Finally, in a note in the larger Taft community, many older residents of Lincoln City were devastated to see a wrecking ball fall on the former Taft Elementary and High School. Equally depressed, many younger residents of Lincoln City, who stood outside for hours in the rain assuming Miley Cyrus would be on the wrecking ball. <laughs> in a related note, the school district has canceled this year's Take Your Daughter to Twerk Day. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the third annual State of the Trap Address. Thanks for listening. And now on to our show.